This Torah portion is number 33, Baku Kotai, in my statues. It means to say those laws, those decree, that are not explained. We are not told why and defy human logic. These are the statues here. There are different kinds of commandments called Mishpatim, another word to mean commandments or deeds. That makes common sense. They deal with being good to your fellow man, being good to the land, honoring God, commandments that we can wrap our heads around and come to terms with. But here, Beku Kotai, this word means in the statutes, in the law, in the commandments that have no human logic. It doesn't make sense. For example, why do the ashes of a red heifer purify one who has come into contact with a corpse? Numbers 19, 1 through 22. I don't know why. Yahweh doesn't say why. So, Be Kuko Tai translates to, in my statutes that don't make any sense. Now, Yah says, if you will, then you will. This statement, Yah, follows with, but if you will not, I will cause. And this statement follows with an effect, which we will see soon. In Leviticus 26 and 3, if ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, if you walk in my statutes and do my commandments, so when God says, if in my statutes you go, study my Torah with the intention that it will lead you to observe my commandments properly. And if you do them, then I will bless you. Do it by faith, not by logic. I am your God. I am your Father. You are my child. I know what is best. Learn, trust, and obey by faith. So today, it's a big lesson on how to. Here we are to study with the intent to learn how to follow that leads to doing Yah's commandments. He is the one we serve, Yah calls to his people to draw them near into his presence. This is the focus of this book of Leviticus. Vaikra. Here again, Yah is affirming his covenant with Israel. The actions and encouragements, the responsibility of the covenant, you and I agree to with Yah. A covenant of blessings and curses. This changes how we approach Yahweh, how we need to consider to change. Malachi 4, 2 through 4 says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I command unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. A prophecy of the Messiah and the covenant that was made. Right. In Hebrews 12, 14 through 15, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. The verse teaches there must be a change. It contaminates. 
the whole world around you. Everything is affected. That's how powerful we can be. In Leviticus chapter 26, verse 4, Then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. These are the blessings that Yah will give. In verse 6, And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And in verse 7, And you shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you. Verse 8, Five of you shall chase a hundred of them, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand of them. Yah will make his people more than conquerors. Verse 9 reads, for I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. We know covenant was already established on Mount Sinai. This word establish, kum, means to rise, to accomplish, to continue to strengthen. To continue, verse 11, And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. Verse 12, And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. Let's go to Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So here we see that Yah is saying, I will walk in the center of you, in your center, the way this is accomplished. Yah is saying it in the beginning of this Torah. To reiterate, verse 3, If ye walk in my statutes, and keep my commandments, and do them. To desire to walk in the things that we can walk in, to show the Father's heart to the world around you. Verse 13, I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, and ye should not be their bondmen, and I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright meaning so that we can now walk upright no going back to egypt in ephesians 2 10 for we are his workmanship created in jesus christ unto good works which god hath before ordained that we should walk in them meaning for us to do the mishpatim, mishpatim, good deed, also meaning commandments. Now, how do we walk with intention to learn? Galatians 5.25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 
So we walk with intention to learn, which leads to doing, and by his spirit, we succeed. Looking at Ezekiel 36, 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Yah will put his spirit, his Holy Spirit, inside us. Looking back at Leviticus 26, verse 13. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen, and I have broken the bonds, the bands of your yoke, and made you go upright. This verse is the blessings. Verses 14 through 16 state the curses. If you will not listen and despise my statutes, abhor my judgments, that you will not do all that I have commanded you to do, but break my covenant. Now, a covenant, remember, is an oath that two people make by passing between two pieces of flesh. This is in Genesis chapters 12 through 17, where Yah made a covenant with Abraham. Oh. So that if anyone chooses to disregard, to break, this word for break is Parhar, meaning to dissolve, to disannul, make void, cast off, not on Yah's part. Yah keeps his promises, but on the one who chooses to break away from it. In Proverbs 29:18 Here it says, "Where there is no vision, the people perish; but he that keepeth the law, happy is he." Torah is our vision, our purpose. Sin is the transgression of the Torah, and the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, verse 23. Returning again to Leviticus 26, verse 16. I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning agu, which can mean fever, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies shall eat it. This verse is yet another list of curses. The consequences do not stop with the person that makes the bad decision, but it also affects their children too. But now let's jump to verse 40 of Leviticus 26. If they shall confess their iniquity, and the iniquity of their fathers, with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and they also, and that they also have walked contrary unto me, meaning that God is faithful to forgive. Let's now jump to verse forty-two. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac. And also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I, rev and I will remember the land. Notice here in verse 42, it doesn't start with Abraham, but instead with Jacob, who is Israel. Because Yah will restore Jacob, Israel, Isaac, Abraham, and the land, to how it was in the beginning. A restoration back 
to the way when God saw and it was good. So this week's word is baiku kote, meaning in my statue.